Tony McNamara's series The Great, which both reviewers and viewers have loved, is largely based on Catherine the Great's life. The second season of The Great concluded with Catherine's effort to have Peter killed and their relationship becoming more volatile. Season 2 of The Great also featured Catherine becoming accustomed to ruling the kingdom by herself. While holding her husband captive, Catherine gradually starts to give in to Peter's attractions again. The plot picks up largely after the events of Season 2's finale, in which Catherine entered her husband's chambers and repeatedly stabbed him in the back. Catherine had finally had enough of Peter's attempts to overthrow her rule and had finally reached her breaking point. She had also played a role in her mother's death, but did she? Peter's body double Pugachev was the unintended victim of Catherine's rising rage, and while her husband's doppelganger manages to escape and live another day, there is now a significant dilemma looming over Catherine and Peter's union. The Great's exciting third season comes to a close with Once Upon a Time. In the season's final episode, Catherine must decide whether to submit or reassert her leadership. The several traitors in her party are finally exposed, and Catherine makes an important progress. At the start of the great season, three Final Pugachev leaves the rally and is met by Archie. Pugachev's capitulation is something that the priest wants to negotiate, but the King Doppelganger is having way too much fun. Archie is invited to join Pugachev. Archie, who is madly in love with Pugachev, starts to falter. They kiss, but Archie turns down Pugachev. The doppelganger is then pursued outside, where Catherine's men eventually catch up with him. Catherine converses with the prisoner. Pugachev wants to succeed Peter and rule alongside Catherine. Pugachev must publicly confess, according to the Empress. He declines, threatening to commit suicide simply to cause a commotion. Catherine walks away from the doppelganger and resumes her game of Russian roulette. While Catherine experiences an existential crisis, Maxim carries out his destiny and kills Pugachev. Petrov rolls his body into Catherine's office while Nikolai, an astronomer, discusses a comet that is headed their way. Then Petrov dares Nikolai to a fight. Catherine spends the night with the woman as her Nikolai, who had an affair with Petrov's fiancée. Elizabeth cuts them off and commands Catherine to focus on the issues at hand. Elizabeth is told by Catherine to leave, but she is in charge of the guards. Elizabeth warns Catherine to take charge or else, she will have to take over on her own before leaving. Hugo comes up with yet another strategy somewhere. He tells Georgina that she might become queen this time. She simply needs to wed Paul, he would aims, when he was a year old. Hugo is seduced by Georgina with a cup of tea. In the woods, Georgina discovers Grigor with Paul. Finally, Grigor's anguish has resulted in a collapse. He is currently the one going astray. Grigor talks about his complicated feelings for Mario. Georgina speaks of her fresh strategy for taking over as empress. Georgina is knocked out while Grigor and Paul leaves. Hugo breaks into Catherine's lodgings in the wee hours. He exhorts Catherine to leave the nation before she is murdered. After that, Catherine continues to play Russian roulette. Catherine shoots the intruder who tries to shoot her with the gun. For Catherine, this unusual incident serves as a wake-up call. She now thinks that reigning is her destiny, and the circumstances have supported her belief. The next day, against Catherine's orders, Petrov and Nikolai get ready for their fight. Catherine makes a pause. She steps in for Nikolai and shoots Petrov once in the leg. Catherine has regained control after having a realization. Mariel tells Catherine that Archie is responsible for Pugachev's uprising, adding fuel to her wrath. Georgina keeps working on her bid for the throne. For an impromptu ordination, she brings Paul right to Archie. Archie ordains Paul in front of Georgina and the Swedes. Grigor arrives to stop the ordination, but it is already too late. The Empress has a request for Archie, so Georgina and Paul can't get married right now. Elizabeth is seated in Catherine's chair in the office again, prepared to seize the reins. Catherine walks in, oblivious to Elizabeth's treacherous behavior. Archie is summoned by Catherine, who then instructs the guards to bury the priest alive. Maxim is instructed by Catherine to go on a tour and claim that he killed Pugachev before heading off to general training. Velimentov will also embark on a tour to inform the Russian people about Peter's passing in a unique way. Catherine wants many distinct rumors about Peter's passing to circulate so she can profit from each one on its own. Pugachev's base is to be attacked by Petrov. Elizabeth gets up from Catherine's seat after being struck by her fresh outlook. She tells a fib, saying that by giving the Empress an ultimatum, she was merely motivating her. Archie is buried alive by the guards. Mariel unearths him, nevertheless, 
before he is put to death. Petrov uses the lookalike's head as a weapon when attacking Pugachev's base rather than cannons. Then, in the final scene, Catherine makes an appearance with a fresh hairstyle. She notices the comet in the sky that she had used to gain back the support of the people. Catherine claims that she was not helped by fate. She accomplished this on her own. Then Catherine dances maniacally in celebration. Catherine has gained back some of her old strength and authority thanks to the deceitful tactics that Archie and Elizabeth have used throughout the series. She has defeated these snakes and prevailed. But Catherine is still having trouble dealing with her loss. She sobs on the ground and collapses. The Empress may put up a fine front, but she is still broken on the inside.